Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Farming Podcast brought to you by Private Property. My name is Mbali Noko, once again, your host, as always. And thank you for joining us on this rainy Thursday evening, um, depending on whether or not you're in Joburg. And quite frankly, I'm just quite tired of this constant rain. Um, surprisingly so, I'm a farmer, and I'm sure you're thinking that, wow, you know, farmers always want rain. So how could I be tired of rain? But yeah, I think I'm tired of rain. I definitely need a bit of sunshine in my life um, to brighten up my day, and I'm sure to brighten up your day. And I hope you're not working too hard as we've just started this new month of February. However, I just want to thank you also for your support, for your likes, shares, and comments on all our podcast videos, whether you're watching live, on YouTube, on whichever social media channel where you're joining us from this evening and every other evening before today. So thank you so much for the support and thank you so much for encouraging me as well as the guests in really doing a lot to assist you within your agribusiness journey or your agricultural journey or farming journey, or maybe just sparking some insight into um, agriculture and farming and really getting your green fingers working. So thank you so much for joining us. And um, today's guest is Busi Rapekwana. She's the CEO and founder of the Transformation Legacy. Um, and Busi is a business coach, a mentor, and I know her from um, interacting with, with her about two, three years ago, um, where she assisted me briefly with my business. And um, I must say, she's a lady that listens with intent and that responds with well knowledge and expertise. So for anybody of you that's wishing to start a farm or um, starting a business um, within the agricultural value chain, whether it be retail, buy and sell, import and export, um, training, coaching, mentoring young graduates, maybe to go into the workplace um, within the agricultural landscape, whatever your um, aspirations might be pertaining to business within agriculture, I think Busi is um, the right individuals to give us key insights, knowledge, expertise, and tips on how to successfully run our businesses and what are the things that we should um, look out for, especially in this tough economic climate um, that we're faced in South Africa throughout this uh, global pandemic. So I won't waste too much of your time and I'd like to bring Busi onto the show. Good evening, Busi, how are you doing? Evening, Bali, I'm doing very well, thank you. And thank you for inviting me to the show. Evening to everybody listening in today. Thank you. It's been a minute since we caught up. Um, yeah. To see your pretty face. You look like you're glowing. You look like everything's going well. Um, you know, for people that don't know you as well as the Transformation Legacy, uh, please just give us a brief background of what your organization does. Um, we are an entrepreneur development company. Our mandate um, is to um, develop and grow small businesses so that they can become sustainable. And the reason why the transformation legacy exists is to build generational businesses, businesses that can leave a lasting legacy, businesses that can transcend from one generation to another. Um, we want to see businesses that exist 100 years from now or 200 years from now um, that, are, that start very small. And it's something that we don't really see regularly, particularly with small black businesses. And we want to make an impact in that environment by equipping businesses with the right skills, the right knowledge, the right information, and just providing guidance um, in terms of how to build solid businesses that can leave a lasting legacy and outlive their founders. So that's, that's who we are and, and what we do. Uh, we provide um, business skills training, business mentorship and coaching. Um, we have various enterprises and supply development programs that are targeted at building small businesses and making sure that we really transform our economy and we position small businesses to be sustainable mm. and change the narrative. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and change the narrative. <laughs> you know what I like about what you just said? You mentioned that you're all about 
building businesses that outlive the owner and businesses that build generational wealth. And in the context of agriculture, uh, predominantly, a lot of the farmers or farms that exist today have been generational farms. You know, I'm a first time farmer or I'm a first generation farmer. And so meaning there was no other farmer in my family before my time that decided to pursue a career in agriculture or just in business alone, just being an entrepreneur. And there's so many um, uh, black entrepreneurs or first time entrepreneurs or business owners who are entering the agricultural um, landscape or space that really don't have mentors um, to, to, to fast track them, I suppose, in a, in a path where they can build, build generational wealth. So for anybody maybe that's listening, that's a first time entrepreneur, first time in business owner, first time being a farmer or just being in agriculture, what advice would you give to this individual that is just starting out in their business journey with the aspirations of building a, a legacy company? Mm. Um, I think it's, it's, it's so important when you're starting out to recognize that there's so many things that you may not know about your industry. There are a lot of things that you may not know about building a business. As entrepreneurs, I mean, when you start your, your farming enterprise, you start it because you're passionate about farming. And, and you know, um, that passion alone, although it, you know, it, it helps you to commit to the growth of your, your farm, um, it, it, will, it does not assist you in terms of navigating um, the business environment and the challenges that comes with growing a business. So it's so important to recognize that and, and to, to get a mentor. I, I always say this, there's, you know, you can't go wrong with finding the right mentor to work with you, to guide you, to assist you, to navigate your way um, into this new enterprise that you're starting. It, it's, it, it's, it's, it's critical for you to, to have somebody who's going to advise you on what to do um, and also just provide you with the knowledge that you need to understand the industry that you're going into. So I will advise, I would advise anybody that's starting out to find a mentor, find somebody who's going to assist you in terms of building your business and also somebody who's going to help you navigate your industry. And you may say, I mean, where do I start in terms of finding a mentor? You do not have to have one mentor. Um, you can have a mentor focusing on helping you to build your business. You can have a mentor um, in, who's going to assist you in terms of providing you with, with industry knowledge and experience. So um, just look for what you need in your business and find somebody there who, who, who's got experience, um, who's got the know-how, who can help you navigate your way in terms of starting to build this enterprise. Yeah, and obviously growing a business. And as you were just talking, a thought came into my mind that, you know, I remember when we just started interacting and um, the advices that you gave me, I think I, I thoroughly enjoyed them in the sense that you came from a different perspective. Do you understand? You came from a different background, not being in agriculture. And so my question is, and we previously actually had about two or three episodes, of, episodes ago, we had a, a session about agricultural mentorship. And so my question is to you, um, when starting out, do we necessarily have to have a mentor that is within our industry or can it be a mentor that has just had um, years of business experience or just knows uh, business and has succeeded in business and has somewhat level of business expertise and experience to help guide you through the business that you're starting and that it doesn't necessarily have to be in farming or retail or import and export or any other value chain along the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it, it's very important to have different perspectives and um, it, it's also good to have somebody who understands business in general, because although you're, you're, you're starting a business in the agricultural space, the, the principles of business remain the same. Yeah. So the nuances of the industry may be different, but the principles remain the same in terms of what you need 
to have the right foundations to grow your business in a sustainable way. So I, I, I always advise that um, have an industry-related mentor, somebody who's very technical, somebody who's got the technical expertise in terms of the agricultural business to take you through um, and, and, and equip you in terms of um, you know, the business that you're going into and the product that you're wanting to sell and have a business a generalist mentor who's going to help you understand general business because you're going to be um, interacting with other business owners as you're selling your products and you have to understand generally how does business work. So it's very important to have both just the business generalist as well as a technical mentor to take you through um, industry specific expertise. Okay, so how do how does transformation legacy work with entrepreneurs, and at what stage um, does the entrepreneur need to be in his or her business to work with transformation legacy? Uh, we we work with entrepreneurs at various stages. Uh, because we recognize that at different stages, entrepreneurs need assistance to take them to the next level. So we work with entrepreneurs who are starting out, um, who do not know exactly how to start, um, how to register a business, where to go, just that basic information that sometimes we may take for granted. Uh, so we work with entrepreneurs um, who who really need that guidance um, at the start of their businesses, um, as well as entrepreneurs that have already started, but are at a place where they really do not know how to go about growing their business. Um, they, you know, they may be experiencing various challenges with finding customers, with you know, managing um, their team or managing their finances, and they need guidance. Um, to navigate their way through those challenges. Um, so those would be like the, your, your growing entrepreneurs, as well as entrepreneurs who have been, I mean, we've, we've worked as well with businesses that have been operating for more than 10 years, who are now at a stage where they feel that, you know, we are stagnant, we need guidance in terms of how we evolve our organization. We've got challenges in terms of process running our business, and we not just need somebody to come in and help us, you know, go to the next level. So we do um, take on entrepreneurs at, at those different levels. And in terms of how we work, uh, we've got different models in terms of our business mentorship programs. We've got programs that are funded by corporate organizations. Um, and, 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 and usually with these programs would go out and inform entrepreneurs uh, about these programs. We run programs in the ICT sector, in the green economy sector, in the cleaning and security sector, as well as other um, um, professional service industries. And so those would be the funded programs that entrepreneurs do not need to pay for directly. And we also have other programs where entrepreneurs can, um, can pay for and just small packages that entrepreneurs can afford. We recognize that, you know, and understand that when you start in your business, you do not have a lot of money to invest in training, in mentorship, as well as the business development support. So we've got various packages available um, for entrepreneurs that are suitable to, to their needs and suitable to their budgets. And yeah, so um, all that information is, is on our website as well. Um, and and we've, we've made sure that we provide resources on our website just so that entrepreneurs have access to basic information that they need to navigate their way through growing their businesses. Yeah, thank you for that. It sounds quite intensive, um, um, especially with these programs that you've mentioned, because I, I believe with your corporate partnerships, they would be expecting certain outcomes from entrepreneurs and that um, a bit of um, commitment will be required for entrepreneurs to complete those programs as much as they too will be benefiting in growing their business. Uh, we see, I want to touch on something here. Um, you know, when we talk about businesses and entrepreneurs, we always tend to focus on those that are starting out. We give a lot of practical advice and knowledge on those that are starting out. And I suppose those that are already path growth stage 
we can say that they're pretty much comfortable. So they really know what's going on. They've got their systems, their processes, et cetera. But I want to focus on the entrepreneurs that um, are really um, at a growth stage. Mm-hmm. Um, those that maybe are in between three to five years that they already have established clients, um, they already kind of know what they're doing. So for example, maybe a farmer has been farming three to five years, they already have their crop that's, that's selected, they have a market to sell to, but now they're struggling to really pivot or to grow. You know, um, What are some of the tools that you would then maybe, um, when working with an entrepreneur at the stage, going into growth stage, what are some of the tools that you would provide to an entrepreneur within this business life cycle? Mm. Um, you know, uh, with, with entrepreneurs that are already established and wanting to pivot to the next level, you might find that a lot of them, um, you know, the business, the, the business is dependent on the founder to, to actually run the day-to-day operation. So that's where we start. We really look at the business. Can the business operate without you? Because if the business can operate without you, then it, it becomes easier for, for you to implement uh, various strategies in terms of growing. Mm-hmm. And that also links to becoming scalable. So that's the first thing that we, we address. And you, might, you, you, you find that with, with entrepreneurs at that stage, they aren't, um, you know, uh, they're not, they don't have systematic ways of running the business. I think in terms of producing the product, it becomes easier for them to do that in a systematic way. But in terms of running the, the, the other um, operational aspect of the business, in terms of business support, they may not have the right systems available to do that. So we look at, um, uh, you know, such um, aspects in, in, in terms of the business, because those are the things that form foundations if you want to build um, a business sustainably. So we, we are very careful to, to provide strategies to just grow. We want to make sure that this business exists in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years. So it becomes very important for us to start with the basics and that's making sure that there's the right systems and processes in place. The business can operate without the founder. The founder has a solid team. They've got a team that they can delegate to. And if they you know, already have an established market, they've got good um, client relations uh, processes that they're putting in place that are not necessarily dependent on the owner, but that can still continue even when the owner is, is away for, 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 for weeks. So there's, there's, a, there's also a very interesting matrix that, that we really like. And we actually measure how many days um, can you be away from your business without your business collapsing? Yeah. And, and so we find- <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, and, and for us, it, it just shows us as your business grow, um, can your business be sustainable? And can your business, um, you know, sustain itself um, beyond you as the business owner? So that's, that's the, you know, one of the matrix that shows us what we need to work on in terms of developing those growth strategies. And as you look at those interventions, right, in terms of how can the business um, remain profitable, scalable, operational without the business owner. Um, does do those interventions always have to involve monetary um, funding? Um, is it like, for example, does it always have to involve capital injections? Because I heard you talk about systems, processes. Uh. Um, it just sounds like an expensive exercise. And what if at that time of the growth phase you just don't have that? So, like, does does implementing those strategies always have to include capital injection in the business or not? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that you need to work with what you have. Uh, okay. So if you don't have the budget for it, we work with what we have. Um, if, you know, in terms of a system, um, I mean, you can use something as basic as a notebook if that's what you have. And that's how basic we get. Um, it's, it's very important for us to achieve the objective 
over and above just having um, things in place that we think will work for you. So we need to work with the resources that you have. And that's an advice that I would give to all entrepreneurs. Um, when you're looking at how to grow your business, you need to look at what do you have currently at your disposal and what can you do with that? You may not have you know, money at that moment, but do you have um, people working with you that have got ideas? Do you have other mechanisms that you can use to market your business or to sell your products? So it's very important to just go back and look at realistically, look at what you have at your disposal and maximize on, 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 on that. Yeah. And when you're working with entrepreneurs and business owners, at what point does the relationship um, come to an end? Because even if, let's say, I'm at a growth phase and Transformation Legacy has obviously assisted me to come up with implementations and strategies that obviously um, grow my business and, you know, ease some of the workload as a business owner. And then we move on to, I suppose, the, the third tier where, you know, the business is operating very well, like a well-oiled oil, well machine. At what stage then do we, do we then exit the, the relationship with transformation a legacy? Or can business owners and entrepreneurs just keep you along as just that sounding board for as long as the business exists? Or do you specifically say, this is when now we have to exit, when the business is at level X based on the goals? How does it work? Mm -hmm. I think it's very dependent on um, the goals that would that we would set with you as an entrepreneur at the beginning of the relationship. Um, when we start the mentorship relationship, you obviously have certain outcomes that you want to achieve that you've got in mind. Maybe you want to increase your sales by 30 percent or you want to hire three more people and you don't know how um, or you want to secure 10 clients and you don't know how. And once you achieve those objectives, you feel that you, you've reached the level where you, you feel comfortable to go off on your own. So, I mean, um, you could exit at that stage. It's very dependent on the relationship that we have with that specific entrepreneur and what their needs are. Um, what we find at times is as your business grows, you start to experience different challenges and you might need um, interventions or need support to help you address those challenges. So it's very dependent on, on you as the entrepreneur and it's, it's, it's really a flexible and customized relationship. Um, so it's, it's, we look at what you need, we look at um, whether you've achieved your goals and whether you're at the stage where you feel comfortable to go off on your own and to grow your business with your team. Awesome. So now talking about um, being in this, obviously, the global pandemic, right? A lot of people have now had reduced income specific on which sectors they're working in. Um, a lot of people have been retrenched um, maybe in last year, in the later part of last year, in the beginning of this year, simply because organizations or their places of work cannot afford them uh, um, anymore as a resource. And we constantly get individuals on this farming podcast saying, I want to try out farming. I want to start uh, farming as a new business. I've always had green fingers. I've had land back home. Um, I'm unemployed now. I'm at home. Or uh, it could be a graduate that's saying, you know, um, I'm frustrated with trying to find a job. Um, all I know is, like you just said, start with what you have. All I know is that I've got land at home. We've got water. Um, but, you know, I'm lacking certain things. What advice would you give to individuals that would just start out um, their businesses, and I suppose in this case, um, becoming farmers or just being, um, yeah, as, let's maybe leave it to farmers, so becoming farmers, but not forgetting that being a farmer is being an entrepreneur. So what advice would you give to a person who is thinking of um, starting their own business, but, um, you know, maybe is feeling a bit scared, is feeling a bit hesitant, they don't have enough capital or reserve funds because they've lost the job and they, you know, they need to ensure that the money that they have takes them um, through you know, a number of months. So what advice would you give to aspirant entrepreneurs who want to start a business, especially in 2021? Mm -hmm. um, I would, there's never a perfect time to start a business. 
<laughs> I always say that there's never a perfect time to start yeah. a business. And um, if, if, if you are at a point where you feel that you really, um, this is something you are passionate about, uh, this is something that you see yourself in, in the long term, and you're doing that for, you're doing this for the right reasons, then I would say start now. Um, there will never be a perfect time. Even when the economy recovers, you will still have other, there will be other factors that deter you from starting a business. So I would say um, just be clear in terms of what you want to achieve out of the business. Be clear that this is something you can do and this is something you can commit to because those are the things that you're going to need to navigate your way through growing your business. You're going to need commitment. Um, you're going to be need clarity of thought, clarity of mind, you're going to uh, need your passion because it's going to keep you going when, yeah, people are not buying from you and there's things happening on your farm and, you know, things are not <laughs> working out as they should be. So those are the basic things that you're going to need um, for you to, to go through your business. And I would say um, the pandemic that we're going through is, is really developing the resilience of many entrepreneurs. As much as this is very challenging and this is a very difficult time, we are, we are going to find that in the next few years, the entrepreneurs that stay the course and that survive this period will be more resilient than they could have ever been. Because we now have to think through different strategies. We have to find opportunities in challenges and in difficult situations. We really have to dig deep in terms of surviving this period. So the, the, the good thing about going, being in business during this pandemic is, is that it's building our resilience and we are building up businesses and structuring up businesses very differently from what we would have done before. Now we are stru we're structuring our business for, for sustainability. We're building our businesses to last. We understand that, you know, um, we, we, we have to be, very, very aware of the little things in our business. We start appreciating every single rand that goes through the business account because you don't know how long you're going to have that for. So we are building new ways of building businesses. And I must say that entrepreneurs who, who will go through this are going to emerge even greater post this pandemic. All right. And my final question, uh, Musi, is um, you mentioned that, you know, it's, having the passion for your business is what will surpass you during the tough times, you know, when clients are not ordering, when things are going bad. Um, and so what advice would you give to the existing businesses right now that are really surviving, you know, um, and, and I, I, I want to put emphasis on that word surviving, so in capital letters, so they're trying their best to still keep their doors open, to still keep their farm gates open. So um, what are some of the bootstrapping measures that you advise for entrepreneurs right now? Because we don't know how COVID is going to last. So should we be um, uh, actively trying to pursue and get more clients? Should we be dropping our clients? Should we be dropping our prices? Um, should we maybe try and forecast, you know, um, how tough times will be in the next couple of months and maybe start retrenching employees just to have a small budget? Like, yeah, what are the bootstrapping uh, measures that you, um, you would just give out to entrepreneurs that are really surviving during this time? Mm. Um, I think one of the first things that I'll start from the financial side, um, you need to look at your finances with, with really close attention and look at the, the expenses that you do not need to incur at the moment um, and, and really spend your money in, in activities that are going to help you generate more money. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say save, save, save. Um, there's expenses that you need to incur at the moment to make sure that you gain more customers, you sell more of your products. So those expenses are your marketing. And I know that there's other companies who cut their marketing budgets or who cut their marketing expenses during this time. But this is the time to spend a little 
even you know even if you have a little on marketing your business and also keep in mind that you are not just selling to survive today but you have to sell for future you have to secure your sale and you have for 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 future prospects you have to secure potential clients for future so i would say that is a good expense to to really consider um you focusing your your your, your finances on um and then the second thing is the customer needs your customer needs are evolving um during this pandemic so it's very important to understand your customer needs and speak to your customers um they may not need the same quantities as they used to they may not they may need smaller quantities they may need different products they may need products packaged in a different way you have to understand what your customer needs um so that you can evolve your offering it's also a good time for you to explore other other um services that you can provide or even other customer segments that you never thought of so this is the time for you to see where are the opportunities um who else could be my customer who else needs my product because ultimately you have a product and you need to sell it to a consumer so who else needs your product at this stage and um just also keep asking yourself that question until you find people that you know really want to buy your product and they're out there they're out there we seeing that we seeing a lot of businesses that are growing during during this pandemic because they evolved um their customer segments because they realized that their current customers do not need their product as much as they did before so i think those would be the three key things so looking at the expenses that you really need to um incur and spending your money on marketing and sales not just for now but for future um secondly just looking at how to evolve um your 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 products and services and understanding what your customers um and your market needs so that you can look for new opportunities wow we see i think you've said a mouthful there and um as you were mentioning about trying to seek other customers i just remembered that i was having a conversation with uh, another entrepreneur who is not necessarily well he he is a farmer um but has opened his own fresh produce market mm-hmm. and he mentioned that you know surprisingly so during this time at the rate in which um we as families and loved ones are burying loved ones mm-hmm. funeral parlors are coming to him um with huge demand for poultry chicken um frozen chicken um goats and sheep that is slaughtered simply because of the high increased numbers of um funerals that uh, a lot of funeral parlors are hosting every single week um you know so um it's something it's a customer segment or a client segment that he just never thought of and um yeah i just wanted to praise you on that t- point or topic and to say definitely seek customers that wouldn't ordinarily be your customers because people think agriculture farming I'm farming crops I want to get my product into retail but there's mm-hmm. other businesses right now maybe that are needing um your fresh produce um etc or maybe even your waste that is um um you know received at your farm so thank you so much Lucy for your time this evening um I'm sure people will be contacting you uh because you gave some very very valuable insights um and yeah thank you so much for um also the tips that you've shared in terms of how we can bootstrap our businesses how we need to think outside the box um how maybe also maybe we just need to spend a bit more on marketing because now we need to get visible everybody's at home everybody's on their laptop on the phone you know um so maybe um um spending a few rands and cents on specific ad spend um might just go a long way and i also like the fact that you've mentioned that it's not about thinking about the now how can my business survive how can my farm survive whatever it's about thinking for the future and i think you know rem- customers will remember you especially in tough times and um thank you for for reminding us of that any last words that you maybe want to share as we wrap up our conversation this evening um thank you very much buddy for for inviting me to this platform i just wanted to um as a parting thought that you don't have to have everything figured out 
Um, I think it's important to take it one step at a time and to also recognize that we are all navigating um, new territory, uh, but to also just, just be encouraged by the fact that you are getting more resilient as an entrepreneur, you are learning uh, much more in terms of building your business, and, and it's just important for you to just stay the course. All the best, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your time. That was Busi Rapikwane, founder of Transformation Legacy, um, where they assist SMEs or small businesses, whether you're a startup, in your growth phase, um, or you are really just uh, hitting a smooth run um, within your business and you know, you've know you got a well-oiled machine. It doesn't mean you should get comfortable at that stage of your business, but it wouldn't harm contacting Transformation Legacy just to see what other alternatives um, you might pick up that could increase or grow your business. So if you have any questions, we will share um, all her company details and information, uh, including the website on the show notes. And if you miss this podcast, it will be available on YouTube um, post um, this, this podcast. And I just also want to encourage you to constantly um, ask questions, comment, like, share, please. I, I think I want to emphasize on the sharing because there might be friends and family who might have missed this valuable conversation and really need some sort of key expert advice. And Boosie is the right person that um, could assist these individuals with their business needs or business questions. So please share this video um, to anybody who you feel that um, really, really needs to hear this conversation and the messages that Lucy left us with. However, before I sign out, sign out, I just want to say that um, uh, please be on the lookout on social media for our competition that we have running. We are announcing winners every single week, and there's an awesome cash prize. Um, ca there's an awesome prize available um, to the the winner and also to say that we will be closing up our weekly podcast with Zama tomorrow at 7 p.m. Um, and she is hosting the Private Property Live podcast. And on the weekend, we have Chad with the Home Shoppers Show. So um, definitely be glued onto your social media. Please like, share, comment. And I will see you next week, Tuesday, with another awesome guest. But thank you so much for joining us. Take care and stay home and stay safe. Thank you. The suburbs of Berea and Morningside are built on a natural ridge that overlooks the home of the Sharks, the Moses Mabida Stadium, uh, Durban Country Club. It's just got an incredible outlook elevated over the city.
Living in Morningside makes so much sense to us because everything is so central. Anything that we choose to do is a couple of kilometers away or a couple of hundred meters away. Restaurants, coffee shops, it's all here on our doorstep. You know, we've got uh, great schools here. Uh, the girls' schools just close by are Maristella and Durban Girls College. And then fantastic boys' schools, uh, Durban Preparatory High School, DPHS, one of the top primary schools in the country, and then Clifton, which now goes all the way to high school. It's so convenient to be in this area where everything is close by. Some of our closest friends stay just across the Amgheni River in Durban North. Durban North is very family orientated with some great schools, some excellent restaurants and some small commercial centres. The promenade along Durban's beachfront, also known as the Golden Mile, got an incredible facelift for the 2010 World Cup and today is used by all of Durban's population. We as a family love the Durban beachfront. If we're not in the water, you'll find us on our bicycles along the promenade. Being a world paddleboard champion, I've travelled to some of the most amazing beaches around the world, but nothing comes close to what we have here in Durban. Durban has great weather and great conditions all year round for surfing and for training and just being in the ocean. And that's why it's known as the warmest place to be. We've lived here our whole lives and there's no place we'd rather be, and this is our neighborhood.